Yo, what's going on YouTube? My name is SoFlo Sneakers and I welcome you guys back to another video. So today's topic is honestly very, very simple yet extremely important when it comes to sneaker botting and we're going to be talking about profile jigging. So the basic idea behind profile jigging is that you're just changing up a small amount of information within your profiles on your bot so that when you check out multiple pairs of shoes on a website, you're not using the exact same information for each checkout. If you do use the exact same information for each checkout, you're more than likely going to get canceled and that is the last thing that we want to do when we're botting. Websites are always looking for a way to combat against sneaker botters because they don't like us and they don't want us checking out multiple pairs of shoes on their sites. And one of the easiest ways that they can see someone's botting or they can see someone's checking out multiple pairs is if they get multiple checkouts with the same exact information. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video, how to get around this. And I'm basically just going to be showing you guys a few different ways to make your profiles as unique as possible so you can avoid cancellations as much as possible. So before we get into things, I just want to make a quick little announcement. Yesterday, I went ahead and I made a free Discord server and I'm inviting every single one of you guys to come and join. It doesn't matter if you just learned what sneaker botting is or you've been botting for many years. I encourage every single person to come and join and we're just going to be chatting, chilling, talking about upcoming releases. You can ask all the questions you want. And I just want it to be a very helpful community, helpful discord group. And most importantly, you're going to be networking with like-minded individuals who kind of have the same interests as you like shoes, reselling, and just kind of making money in general. So I'm super excited for this server and I'm really looking forward to chatting with a ton of you guys. So I really hope to see you guys there. And on that note, we'll get into today's video. All right, so we're just gonna hop over into Splash Force and I'm just gonna go through the billing tab and I'm just gonna show you guys everything right there just so it's super easy. So we're gonna come over to the billing tab and let's just fill out some info. If you're using a virtual credit card, you're gonna see that there's no name on the card and for these, you can kind of put whatever name you want. You just want to make sure that whatever name is on the billing address is on the shipping address as well. So let's just say I'm using a privacy card, then I could actually use John Doe as the name. But just over here for payment details, you want to make sure that it's exactly the same and that it matches. A question that I see a lot is, can they cancel you just because you have the same name on your profiles? Like, let's say my name was actually John Doe. And that's what I use for my profiles for all of them. And I had five different cards all with John Doe on them. No guys, they cannot cancel you for having the same name. There are so many people with the name John Doe. There's so many people with other names that are the same. So the next thing we'll get into is jigging the address. So as you can see here, it says 1070 Jordan Street, Miami, random address. Sorry if that's your address. So the first type and the most classic type of address jig you can do is just putting three letters in front of the address. So for example, you would just type in XYZ there. So you have XYZ 1070 Jordan Street. So this is example number one, and this isn't the one that I personally use, but I have seen people have success with it. So if you just want to mix it up and try this one out, I say go for it because I've definitely seen it work for some people. I've seen people have issues with it where the UPS man just doesn't deliver it because they couldn't figure out that the three letters in front didn't actually mean anything. But I've honestly only seen that happen a couple times. The next one and which is my personal favorite is just doing the room jig. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. So the first one, we would just do room one, just like that. And then you can go all the way up to 10. So that's 10 profiles you can jig right there alone just with this one. And then if you just take out the O's and then you go room one just like that, there's 10 more profiles that you can jig just like that. So you could do room one, room two, room three, all the way up till 10. And then you can do the RM period, one, two, three, all the way up to 10 as well. So that automatically just gives you 20 profiles that you can jig right there. Another easy one is just doing apartment. So if you do street and then you could do apartment one just like that all the way up till 10 as well and that works fine but if you live in an apartment you obviously don't want to put the wrong apartment number so you just want to make sure that you don't live in an apartment but if you live in like a residential home you can do this apartment one all day long they just ignore it obviously i can't guarantee that these jigs work for you 100 percent of the time but they have been working really really well for me another easy way to do it is instead of doing it in address one over here you click on address two and then you kind of do the same thing down there 
So you can do some in the address one, some in the address two, just to mix it up and kind of see what works. So we'll just go over to address two and then we'll just do room one and then save. And then you can do the same thing all the way up to 10 for that. And I honestly don't know if it's a huge difference from line one to line two, but I just like to switch mine up just in case. And I've had success with both in the past, so I don't think it's a huge deal, but it's just a little way to switch it up even more. So obviously you want to keep your city and state the same. You do not want to touch those. The only thing that you really want to change on your address is going to be that room one, room two, apartment one, apartment two at the end, or just the three letters right in front. So another thing that's kind of speculation, and I'm not exactly sure if this really has an effect on anything, is the phone number. So you do wanna change up your phone number for all of your profiles, but one thing I've heard is that you wanna to try to keep the real area code. So for Miami, it's 305, so all I would do is keep that and then just change up the numbers afterwards, and you wanna just try to make it look as real as possible and preferably use real phone numbers if you can. But like I said, I don't know how legit this is with keeping the area code, but I just do it because why not? You can come up with so many different phone numbers with just the area code. So that's just one more little thing that I do. So when it comes to your email addresses, I've heard many, many different things, guys. Some people have success with catch-alls. Some people have success with Gmails, Yahoo's. And some people say to keep your name in the email. There's just so many different things that people say work. And honestly, for me, I've had success with both. So I just use Gmail accounts, but I also use catch-alls. And especially for Yeezy Supply, I can say this much, that Yeezy Supply does not care, guys. They don't care really about anything. They don't care about multiples. They don't care if you have the same address, if you don't jig, if you do jig. I always jig just to be safe, but I've checked out multiple times with the same profile. And on the last live cop video, they actually declined one of my profiles and then I got to check out with it afterwards. Adidas is a little bit of a different story and they seem to cancel and decline a lot harder. So I wish I could give you guys a ton of good info on foot sites, but unfortunately I still really haven't even figured it out myself. And I've honestly only seen a couple people who really seem like they have it down. And of course, they don't really like to share the secrets too much, which I totally understand. But for foot sites, what I do know is that you want to have your profiles as unique as possible. The one thing that I do know is that typically you can only check out with one profile between all the different foot sites. So let's just say you check out with profile one on champs you more than likely won't be able to check out with profile one on Foot Locker, Foot Action, or East Bay either. So for Cyber, I'm pretty much just doing one checkout per profile on Foot Sites. For the Satans dropping on Thursday, they're supposed to be super, super limited on Foot Sites. It's looking like it's gonna be under 10,000 pairs. So after this drop, hopefully I can get some checkouts and kind of see which profiles have been working the best. And also if I do get some cancels, hopefully I can see what's going on there. And of course, I will keep you guys 100% updated on that. So moving on to Shopify, as you guys know, it's definitely one of the hardest sites to bot. So just for an example, on the bariums that I hit, Concepts only ended up shipping me one of them and they kind of just told me that it was a duplicate order even though it was a totally different card, totally different profile. But honestly with Shopify, it's kind of hard to check out more than one or two each drop anyways, at least for me. So I'm not really too worried about them canceling on there. So there's honestly not too much more to jigging your profiles. The whole point is you want everything to be as unique as possible. I think that just about wraps up today's video, but I hope I was able to help some people. And as always guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you got some value out of this video. And that's about it for today's video. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.